How's it going guys? We are all the way up in Northern California for the Velocity Invitational. Starting things off in my dad's shop. I haven't seen this Bronco since it's been completed. We did a couple updates over the years, but let's check it out. It has come together super well. Haven't heard it start. Haven't even seen the interior yet. Looking pretty good. Hey, thank So what you. motor is in this? Uh, 331 Stroker. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Let's hear it. Should be about 350 horsepower. And that is way more than four, yeah? We'll see. <laughs> Love the two-tone light blue and white, which is so classy. How incredible is the license plate on this? <laughs> I don't think it's real, but that is absolutely awesome. Then look at this, I have no idea what this is. Absolutely enormous power wagon. Got some really cool cars out here at Sonoma. Apparently they have a pretty big Ford display and we're gonna be putting the Heritage 06 GT in the show itself. Such an amazing looking car. One of my favorite parts, a little hidden secret is the headlights say 100 because they built this car to commemorate a 100 year anniversary of Ford. And another secret is this car is so hard to put into reverse that I made a video about it and then people made fun of me. <laughs> First time driving this in a while, the doors are hilarious with that cutout. If you don't dip your head to the side, it feels like you're gonna chop off your head. The interior of this thing is so cool. It feels retro, but modern at the same time, seeing that supercharged V8 behind you. Honestly, this is one of the coolest supercars ever made. And of course, having a manual transmission, that analog, no traction control, is a, a dicey but epic experience. And the steering wheel is actually one of the smallest steering wheels in diameter of any cars I've ever driven. This car literally can go 60 miles an hour in first gear. The gearing is so tall. Ooh, check that out, Ford GT race car, that is sick. Wow, not one, but two McLaren F1s sitting next to each other. How cool is this McLaren F1 GTR being loaded off of the trailer? So just put the Heritage GT in the show here, and then check it out, Ford's got their own booth over here. They've got the Mark II race car, but I believe they're unveiling the Mark IV for the first time, which is under the covers right over there. It'll be cool to see this this weekend, trying to guess some of the differences with the cover on. It's pretty hard to tell. It does look like the hood has some little differences, but uh, only time will tell. I do love the fact that they added a roof scoop to the design of the race car, and that massive wing is super epic. Check this out, Porsche GT1 3.2 liter twin turbocharged six cylinder, making 600 horsepower and only weighing 2,000 pounds. One of the coolest cars ever from the 90s. Then we have the legendary CLK GTR and the F1 GTR. These are three of the coolest cars ever made and they're all next to each other. That is epic. Next to it, we've got the F1 GTR, six liter naturally aspirated V12 making 600 horsepower, zero to 60, 3.8 seconds, center seat layout. These things are worth upwards of $20 million. And then next to it, the CLK GTR, another naturally aspirated V12 car with 600 horsepower. One of the coolest looking vehicles ever created. Not that these cars weren't already incredibly spectacular. I've just been told that this is one of two street legal F1 GTRs in the world. And the owner of it actually drove it on the quail rally on the street. Can you imagine driving this thing on the road? That is unbelievable. McLaren's gonna have a huge presence at the show. We've got a beautiful 765 LT Spider and then a Senna over here. Apparently they're unveiling something new this week. So this is pretty cool. I just showed you the customer card that you can buy from Ford. These are the actual Le Mans race cars, both of which had a series of victories in Le Mans in 2016 and 2017. How crazy are all the controls on the steering wheel? That is unbelievable. Something I didn't realize is on the Le Mans cars, this is usually where the road car exhaust would be. It's kind of a camera setup. And then they've routed the exhaust down to the side. It's got a side exit exhaust. 250 GTO on the track. Check this out, McLaren F1 being delivered on this truck. It's XP4, experimental prototype four, and then we've got two more F1s over here. And then of course, the F1 GTR track car.
today for your Check second Check this out, 250 GTO. What an absolutely gorgeous car. 250 GTO startup. Well guys, one of those pinch yourself moments. I am sitting in the Ferrari 250 GTO. First time ever sitting in one of these. I believe there's only 36 ever made in the world. Three liter, naturally aspirated V12. Funny enough, it makes less than 300 horsepower, just under 300, but this was the king of the track back in the day. Look at that gated manual transmission. How cool is this? This is a sight I honestly thought I might never get to see. That gated manual, beautiful wooden steering wheel, those analog gauges, and then this piping here is very interesting. The dashboard material is as well, and those blue seats are gorgeous. Leaving the GT behind, and first time riding in the Bronco. Pretty cool bench seat. Then another golf car. Sorry, Dad, but this one is a little bit cooler. Yeah. <laughs> 917. Had to get a closer look of this 917K before the crowds start tomorrow. My dad noticed, look at this, the mirrors, how they're bolted to the fenders with this kind of shanky layout there. And then check out how the doors open. I mean, this car is absolutely beat to crap but it's still probably worth upwards of $20 million and a huge part of racing history. The 917K in its full form, 5.4 liter twin turbocharged flat 12 made upwards of 1100 horsepower. This thing was an absolute monster at the time, weighs practically nothing. What a death trap. Well guys, it was super cool getting to see Velocity Invitational set up. Tomorrow the actual event starts, so we'll see you there. All right guys, it is officially day one of the Velocity Invitational. As you can hear, the cars are fired up. It is insanely loud. They're about to go out on the track. But let's tour some of the areas we haven't yet seen yet. I did have to, for personal reasons, come back and stare at these cars again. Just an unbelievable, maybe the coolest cars of the 90s possible, all next to each other with the CLK GTR, F1 GTR, and the GT1 Porsche. First time seeing the Vorsteiner STO in person. Pretty cool to see the carbon additions they made on an already extremely aggressive car. Looks like we've got a front lip there, some extra carbon fiber there. The wheels look really good on this car. Not much you can do to a wing on the STO. Looks like they made a more aggressive rear diffuser as well. Then easily one of the coolest cars, Gunther Works Speedster. I just love the way these look and they have the performance to match. The seats and interior quality is absolutely ridiculous. Still haven't been able to drive one of these yet, but hopefully in the future. Something a lot of people probably don't know is the owner of Vorsteiner created Gunther Works. That's why they're next to each other. Some of my favorite cars, the Porsche 962. Not only do they look absolutely incredible, the performance figures are gnarly. 740 horsepower and it weighs only 1800 pounds. So the power to weight ratio is absolutely insane. And they just look so cool. I mean, look at the size of that turbo. That is ridiculous. Some historic Formula One cars from 1966 to 1981. These things are absolute death traps. I mean, no safety precautions were taken. This has gotta be unbelievably scary to drive, but so badass at the same time. We've got a really impressive lineup of McLaren hypercars here. Two Senna GTRs in insane livery, full carbon fiber Senna that looks absolutely nuts. Another Senna, and then we've got almost every McLaren hypercar made. We've got a Senna over here, the McLaren P1, we've got a Speedtail and another P1, pretty much just missing the Elva and the Sabre. So they've got a really cool hypercar section that is filled out from last night when I dropped off the Ford GT. Wyra BC, still one of the best cars I have ever driven, and next to the Zon Honda R, owned by Cargroms. I can't even imagine what this is like to drive. One of my favorite cars of all time. Sorry that it's super loud, the cars are going crazy. Then we've got Schmee's Zenvo. Took that for a spin, was an incredible experience. Heritage Ford GT 2019. Then the 06 Heritage GT. Next to it, a full exposed carbon fiber 765 LT. The craftsmanship on this is actually really, really awesome. And then check this out, this is a steamer 
literally a Lamborghini steamer. Apparently it's official made by Lamborghini and that's not just the sticker. I had no idea they make stuff like that. SV, SVJ. And then apparently this is the first customer delivered Pininfarina Batista in the country. Full blue exposed carbon fiber. This thing looks absolutely awesome based on the Remock Navera powertrain, but arguably with cooler looks. What do you guys think? Cool to see all of the different wings from behind the cars. Look how wide the 720S GT3 race car is. Massive rear wing. The wide body looks super cool. The original supercar, the Lamborghini Mira, seeing these never gets old. How crazy is this? A room full of McLaren Formula One cars. This is a vintage M7C. Look, it's got a front wing as well as a rear wing. That is absolutely insane. All of these are about to be run on the track, which is gonna be absolutely amazing to see. We've got more modern generations of McLaren F1 cars as well. Look at the arrow on this one. Crazy to see the front splitter goes both over and under the front nose cone and then check out those brake cooling ducts, all of the little arrow veins underneath. Man, just look at how they've developed over the years. And I can't believe they actually tried at one point to have two wings like that. That's so cool. Fun to see them rolling all of the F1 cars around for a team photo. Look at this, the Lamborghini power washer is the most popular thing at the event. So I'm unable to officially confirm this, but I was told this is the first customer delivered Pininfarina Batista in the US. Four electric motors based on the Remock Navera powertrain, 1900 horsepower, zero to 60 in under two seconds. The Navera, when I drove that with Brooks, was easily the fastest car I have ever driven. This is essentially the exact same thing, just with a different body. Honestly, I think the Pininfarina Batista looks better. The spec on this is really nice. Full exposed blue carbon, blue calipers, the blue pinstriping. I love the way the rear wing works as well. One thing that I've been very much enjoying about this event, I haven't been to the Velocity Invitational before, is the crowds aren't overwhelming. Sometimes when you go to these events like Goodwood, you can't even move. But this, there's plenty of space to actually see all the cars and get in on the action. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. We've got something really special planned with one of these in the next couple of videos. So stay tuned. I look forward to seeing you next video.